transcription on. Okay, Matt must be secretly pushing buttons. Yeah. Um, everybody, hello. It is, what is the day? April 19th, Tuesday. Your Chaos Weekly community meeting is happening right now and you're here for it. So thank you. The minutes should be in the chat. If you need them again, we can certainly drop those in there. And if you don't mind um, putting your name in as an attendee today, that would be awesome. Um, all right, let me share my screen. Here we go. Hooray. Okay, uh, let me make sure I can see the chat though. There we go. I hope everybody's doing well. Drop your name and something good in your life right now. Um, if you have more than one thing, you can put all of them in there. That's fine. We like that. Let's start. So number one is the GitHub's maintainer month. It looks like Ruth put this in here. Do you want to talk a little about that, Ruth? Maybe. Uh, looks like Ruth said, Kara. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Oh, sorry, I was muted. <laughs> so uh, my voice is kind of cracked, but I hope you can hear me. So we can do you just fine. Okay, cool, great. So um, Kara put out like a reach out for um on Twitter, and I I kind of like messaged her, and she, Kara said um she draw an idea. So GitHub maintenance month is like they're celebrating maintenance month of June. If you navigate to the GitHub repository, there's also like a site link. So Kara asked if uh, Chaos, since I was part of Chaos, I'm part of Chaos, Kara asked if we would want to like run activities. So in the month of June, they have like a calendar where, you know, we have activities to celebrate maintainers and all that stuff. So uh, Kara asked if we would want to run like activities and maybe talk about Chaos metrics to maintainers. Um, you know, and I, I, I told uh, Kara that I would come bring it to the team and then I'll get back to her. So yeah, so I wanted us to chat about that. What would be the main point or the main action item, the work that we would be committing to being super pragmatic guy? I think we'll have to like determine that. Um, the idea from her mainly was that if we could um, do like a virtual events to show maintainers, you know, maybe part of our metrics, I think we'll have to decide on what we want to do, but they have like a schedule where we could okay. do a workshop or, you know, a, a working group session. They have like, let me put this site in the-, the main Well, we could, I mean, I would certainly be willing to volunteer to do a workshop and I can, probably coerce Daniel or somebody at Paturgia to work with us on that, if the intention is that it's a software workshop. I just put, oh yeah, okay. The Lisbeth is already being, so this is the calendar, yeah. So um, they are trying to like bring up events, you know, something to fill up the schedule. But I, th I think I'll, I'll have to ask that if we decide what we want to do is yeah. this so, so this is this related directly to she code for africa or is this a separate effort no this is what github okay yeah well, i would certainly welcome participating okay now now that i understand more about what this is having a maintainers munch which which really sounds like sounds like a group therapy for maintainers sounds appealing to me yeah yeah i suspect that they're pretty flexible on what what we might do as long as it's relevant to to maintainers i mean i think I think if we did something for for maintainer month, maybe it would be less of a less of a technical demo and more of a maybe how as a maintainer can I improve the health of my projects? 
And here are some ways to measure how you might do that. I mean, it's kind of what I would think because you're going to get maintainers from you know all kinds of projects, all kinds of technologies. So it'd be really hard to put together something super technical in a way that's going to be accessible to lots of different types of maintainers. But all maintainers are interested in how do I make my project better? Yeah. Even also, the project has a suggestion to have a special podcast, so we can have a special podcast of chaos maintainers about their experience or anything. So I'm sorry, I I may am just catching up, but this is a, it's a talk. Is that what this would be like a 30 or 30, 45 minute talk? Is that right? I don't know about the time. Okay. Yeah, I don't know about like time slots, but. Okay. It looks super flexible. This is less of an event and more of a mm -hmm. collection of activities as far as I can tell. I see. Yeah, like all in the month of June. I see. Are any of the sessions optional for something that's more interactive or should we assume that it's more of a traditional presentation? Because I have an idea for like something that's more interactive, which is I was just looking at our metric for project burnout focused on maintainers and maintaining the well-being of maintainers. Um, and I would love to say put what's in that metric into more of an active workshop setting where we could get feedback on what elements are more or less impactful, I guess, from their own perspective. Um, there's a way not to say stress test the metric, but there's a lot of guidance and a lot of nuance in what's described in it that if we put it into a practical setting, like a group of maintainers across various projects, we could, I don't know, we could get some, like some feedback on it as well as some guidance of how to make this work in their setting. And it's, it's kind of like, I, I feel like with a lot of our metrics, since we have an, an example that has to be overly generalized because we're trying to apply to as many things as possible. And this could be a cool, a cool way to bring what we've put together as an idea and see what works and what actually sticks for a group of real life maintainers. Yeah, plus one on that. Another thing is, I think burnout is something every maintainer can relate to. So it's going to be an interesting conversation. Yeah, and I'm just looking. I, I remember Kara tweeted about this um, a day or two ago. And yeah. what she said was, you know, maybe you have a podcast and want to theme your June episode around open source maintainers, or you have resources that you're launching or a related Twitch stream. So it sounds like the format is totally, totally up to us. I suspect that we have to pull the whole thing together and and deliver it as a part part of this it sounds like because it's so flexible it sounds like you know it's not you know a particular platform or a particular type of thing it sounds like we could kind of do whatever we wanted is my guess we could reach out to kara and ask her kara is a lovely human being yeah based on ruth's comment here, it says looking for folks or projects who want to run activities in June and then list them on the calendar so we can co-promote them. So yeah, it looks like we would have to do all of it and then GitHub will just put it on their calendar as like a, a, a bonus. Mm -hmm. So if somebody wants to take that on, awesome. Yeah, I can, I can take that on. Is there a deadline to come up with something? I didn't see it when you were scrolling through Elizabeth. Deadlines. Well, it's in June is the maintainer month. Okay. Because I was thinking part of what we're trying to do with the DEI audit too, it does include burnout. And I'm thinking of like, if there could be just kind of guides that could we that we could provide for maintainers around best centering DEI within their projects. It's something that we're doing anyway, and I wonder if this could be a nice way to start getting that that work out there. 
There's a number of people here at this workshop in Lawrence that are focused on burnout and DEI, so I will connect us with them as well. It looks like uh, we would just submit a PR in this maintainer month. Um, is what they're that's what their guidance is. Okay. So whenever anybody wants to do that, go for it. <laughs> go for it. So are we agreeing on like burnout? Do we have? I think there's enthusiasm for the idea. And it's something that all maintainers struggle with at some point or another, I suspect. Okay, so it's going to be like a, a group session, more interactive, like an interactive session. So when open the PR, I put in all details. Ruth, did I hear you say you wanted to kind of uh, lead this effort? Did I, I don't want to put words in your mouth. I know Sophia also. Yeah, was... yeah I would love to do that. But I want to like get like put enough info. So we have like, should, should it be like an interactive session? So when I'm opening up the PR, I put enough information in there. Yeah. So um, if anyone is interested in participating in this or helping organize, coordinate, whatever, get a hold of Ruth. Does that make sense? Are we good? Completely. Good. It seems like Matt, to your question earlier about the deadline, it seems like as long as you get it in before June, then okay, like maybe that'll be good. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> don't know. When it sounds like it's not just like the content that we'd have to think about, but also the delivery of it and how we propose to engage with folks over the month that kind of stuff too but the whole yeah. process around it i was just looking at the old prs to see if anybody else had submitted stuff so it looks like kara just got the ball rolling with those two first ones so okay, okay. cool thanks for bringing that up bruce that's awesome yeah, fantastic. All right, any other questions, comments, feedback, anything to discuss on this? All right. Um, the next thing we wanted to just make sure everybody saw that we released our metrics, hooray. And we wanted to give a special shout out to a few folks. Um, Vinod, you're awesome. Thank you for all of your work and pulling all the last minute changes, getting that ready to go. You're, you're amazing. Also, Matt G and your boy, thank you for doing all of the quality control and looking through everything, making sure it all looks great. And of course, we have to thank Kevin, who is manages all of this stuff. Um, and there's a lot of moving parts. So hats off to all of you. Also, thank you to everyone who worked on the metrics and who also took the time to review metrics from other working groups and things like that. All of those people, all of you make our metrics amazing. Do you guys wanna see them? I think we do. Let's look, metrics definitions. Look at these PDFs, they're beautiful. They're super gorgeous. They're also very long, but they're very gorgeous. So any metric you ever wanna see, it's all in this nice little PDF here. Images, all of it. Look how pretty that is, beautiful. And also the Chinese version is equally as beautiful. Gorgeous. So thank you everyone for all your work on that. And all the metrics of course are listed back here on this page and they all have their little tags removed because they're all official now. So hooray, hooray, hooray. Um, seven new metrics, two name changes, and two metrics turned into metrics models, which is a curious thing. 
as we evolve and change what we think a metric is. For sure. We still don't know. Uh, questions, comments, feedback. Big thanks. I agree. Thanks to everybody. That was really great. That was really great. And the next one, the next release will happen in October. Um, probably won't have this number of new metrics um, <laughs> because we're going to be focusing on cleaning up some metrics. So we'll have maybe some revised metrics to add and maybe not so many new ones. Do we want to talk about this template? Whoever just put that on there, Matt G. That would be me. So I just wanted to let you know that in each of your, yeah, you can click on it. Each of your working group repositories now, this is just in common, but there are now three different metric templates. So one, the first one is for a metric idea. So this is like a new idea. You know how we capture the new metric ideas. The second is for the second is for, um, yeah, go back. Sorry. <laughs> so, so metrics release candidates. So this is the template that you would copy and paste normally into a uh, release candidate. So now it's just a template. So when you open a new issue, you can just use that template. You don't have to copy and paste. And then the third is for revising a metric. So particularly in this round, as you're revising a metric, this is the template that you should be using um, for that revision process. So all should be good. And we're still Anish. keeping. Go ahead. No, sorry. Yeah. Initially, I was uh, like, we uh, what our practice was, we had a metric idea and metric release candidate as a one issue. Now we are creating two separate issues. So the, the metric that, idea, uh, if so oftentimes within a repository this is just like hey i had an idea for a metric just okay it's just tracking like a new idea it doesn't necessarily mean that we're working on it okay but it's just tracking that new idea okay i think this is fantastic it's super clear and you know because we do have like that's a great way to for someone to contribute is if they may not have time to develop the metric, but they've seen it or have this idea for it, mm -hmm. um, they can certainly open an issue and get it out there. So that's and awesome. We have this in a lot of our working groups anyway, just kind of a list of just holding ideas. Mm -hmm. And so then the, the other two are 02 and 03 are really about the release process. So that's when you have developed, yeah. you finalized a metric and you need to get it out as a metric release candidate, just follow that template. And each one of the working groups has their own, like I had to replicate each of these templates into each of the different metrics working groups, just because I didn't want to put it into the org, the org.github folder, because then it would show up, all these templates would show up in like Remora Lab related things and Augur related things. And I don't think you necessarily need these metrics templates. Yeah, some of them are just organically different whether we like it or not. <laughs> so now when we go to issues and we say, I wanna open a new issue, we have these lovely options, so. Correct, and if you and see problems with them, just you can in any of the working groups, like if you see an update that you wanna to make to the template, just go into any working group and suggest a change on the template and just tag me and then I'll see that and then I can cascade it across the others. You know what I mean? Yeah, so you go to code and then just dot GitHub folder and they're there. Boom, love it. Modify them there. Magic. It is magic. It's amazing. It's far from writing code in Notepad, which is how I started <laughs> writing code. So this is every everything is is a miracle to me. It's all I amazing. Still, I still write a shameful amount of code in Notepad. <laughs> Your secret's safe with me, Sean. We won't tell anyone. Uh, no one knows. <laughs> good. Um, I also see this metric models include software. Did someone put that on here? 
Yeah, it just, there's been a discussion in uh, in the general group as well as in the metrics models working group that it's pretty hard to conceptualize what a metrics model is without an implementation of it. And Yahui built on that in the general discussion and said, you know what, it's not just building it in software that's important, it's doing some kind of empirical evaluation that the metric model itself is useful. Now, I'm, I don't think he's talking about a research study, but I, I think it, my read of the intention in Yahui's comments is that, okay, we, we define the metric model, we build some software, and then we run it against a couple of repositories to see if this is telling us what we think it's telling us. And I, th I th it all makes sense to me because that way we know the metrics models we pr are producing have utility to people. So I just wanted to summarize that here. And if someone has feels about that, um, you can join yeah. the metrics models. Or, or say so here. I mean, There's not everybody can make that meeting. And I, I, I don't think we discussed or intended to discuss, there, there's metric models in that group, but there's also, Elizabeth, help me, are they, are they we call them checklists or what do, we, what do we call the things that you can't easily measure with trace data? Uh, toolkits, is that what you're thinking? Toolkits, thank you, yes. So th this yeah, idea yeah. doesn't, we didn't discuss toolkits at all. Those are a different phenomena also under the metrics model working group. And obviously you probably wouldn't be building software. You might be evaluating, but that's kind of been out of scope of the discussion we've had so far. So yeah, if you can join, if you are interested in talking about this stuff, um, it, they're complicated conversations and we're still trying to sort out what our official stance I think is on a lot of things. But um, those metric models group, uh, that meeting is, is awesome. I know it's a, at a bad time for our poor U European folks, but um, yeah, check the chaos calendar for those. They happen at 6 p.m. US Central, Chicago time every other Tuesday. Um, or you can join the Slack if you want to have the async conversation. Yeah, the the, the most yeah the the, the most um, wide ranging discussion we had was on Slack. Just uh, again because of the time zone differences, mm -hmm. and, and it's I think it's in the general channel though. It's probably not where it belongs. It's just where it happened. <laughs> yeah. All right. Anything else about any of this stuff in number two? Nope. Okay. Let's go on. Um, I put this on here. Uh, she code Africa update. Just wanted to give a quick update. Um, we have a repo. Yay. Ooh. We haven't named the bot yet, but right now it's chaos Slack bot. And again, this is going to be um, a Slack bot that helps newcomers um, point them to resources and find their way through the chaos jungle. Because <laughs> um, there's a lot going on here. So yeah, we're hoping to help that out. Um, hopefully one of the uh, functions of the bot will be if someone is mentioning certain keywords, it might pop up a direct message to that person and say, hey, just so you know, here's a here's a reference that might be helpful to you since you're, you mentioned Outreachy, for instance. Did you, have you seen these? Here are some docs for you. So things like that, because right now all of that stuff is all manual and it all requires someone from the chaos team to answer a question directly or to intervene or to have some kind of conversation, um, which is, is great, it's fine. I like that personal touch, but it also means that, you know, hopefully we're, we're catching everybody, we're catching all the questions and then that way someone can find what they need before they have to wait for somebody to respond. So, so yeah. Um, any questions? Okay, I see a couple questions over here from Mahi. When does the discussion about Augur happen? There is not a meeting for Augur, there used to be, um, but there isn't now. So I think everything happens in Slack. Sean, would you say that's fair? That, that's fair. I mean, uh, we took away the Augur meeting because it wasn't really widely attended. I think if 
there's demand for it. There's no harm in giving it a giving it a try again to see if that that helps to push the project forward. I, I might suggest that we have a more general meeting about chaos software, so that any software questions that arise with Grimoire Lab or Augur could you know we could use that meeting to you know help advance the Grimoire Lab product as as well as answer any questions about Augur. I, I don't know if Daniel's still on the call or what his, his thoughts might be. You're unmuted. You're muted, Daniel. I think. Is Daniel muted or is my computer acting up? He's having audio issues again. Okay. So the I think the question from Mahi was really about in relation to the uh, current programs that we're supporting and questions about Augur, so like GSOC or yeah. LG, and I think, I think that's... we're at the deadlines for those already, right? I think one of the deadlines was today and the other is the 22nd, if memory serves. Yeah, I think that's right. The GSOC deadline yeah. is today. Um, Mahi, in answer to your other question, why don't we have a Discord server? That's a good question. I think um, we have, I think Slack is probably just gonna be our communication channel of choice for the time being. Um, we are opening up a discourse forum, which is different, I know, than Discord, even though in my brain, I have to think about which one is which, because I'm old, but- They both um, confuse me. The, the right? similar naming has they confused should, me. They should be completely different names in my brain, but- Yeah, um, mind. So we will have that as a forum, but obviously that's different. So um, yeah, for now, we're just gonna kind of stick with Slack. Um, the power of inertia. Yeah. And Daniel's having some audio issues, but that's okay. Um, so this is a topic we can maybe revisit. Ever, you know, whoever would be involved in this, think about it. And if you want something on the calendar, just let me know and I will be happy to put that on there and spread the word that it exists. But I will leave that up to you all to decide if you have the bandwidth for that and if that makes sense. Um I'll circle back with Daniel separately and how, what that might look like and how we might manage it. Okay. Since he's having audio trouble. Yep. Hi. Do you hear me now? Hey, yeah. Hey, there he Good. is. Sorry again, this happened last week. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm, I mean, at least to, you know, to open the discussion, my, um, yeah, the only, the only concern basically is about setting up the goals that we want to, you know, to achieve having this meeting, um, that would be all. Because if we, I mean, based on previous experience, and probably you've, you've had the same, Sean, with, with OR, um, um, you, you could keep explaining once and again the software or the purpose of the software or so, while maybe the purpose of the meeting is a different one. So it's just about, you know, trying to, to focus and have a clear outcome of the meeting. So then we can say, okay, we are, this is working as expected. I, 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 I agree. I, I, my, I, I think my thinking is let's, maybe an idea would be to have, um, I, I owe a to-do from our meeting in Madrid to install Grimoire Lab myself. And maybe we could have a meeting about what it's like when a complete noob tries to install Grimoire Lab and what lessons can be learned by the noob. Um, mm. Not maybe that's not a good idea. I don't know. <laughs> Sean, I think maybe maybe that the, the, a good starting point, but this is something to discuss probably in, in out of this because we are we, we, this is in chaos in general, but something like having a talk together about chaos software in 
in Dublin. Well, I, I've been in Dublin, not in North America, but um, yeah, maybe not even in at, at the chaos. Uh, but we can go for chaos, con, of course. But for open source yeah. summit in general, and say, okay, this is chaos software, and this is the purpose, and blah blah. blah. So then, probably having this discussion with at least between both of us and other chaotics may make sense. So then we are kind of building the chaos software branch discussions and everything. I like that, like a chaos software con kind of an event. Well, I was just thinking about the talk, but uh, well, we yeah. discussed last week about having the workshop during chaos con specifically. So. Right. Yeah. I think that's still hanging out there as a unresolved. Oh, I thought we, we agreed, but uh, yeah. We, we agreed on the idea. Um, and I think, I think we'll, so we'll, we'll find a location and we'll do that. Okay. I agree with you. That's, that's a good place to start. And I honestly don't think a lot of people are going to be diving into Grimoire Lab or Augur over the summer, unless they're in Google Summer of Code. Please see. Yeah. Okay, so just to circle back, if y'all want a meeting on the calendar, just let me know and I will set that up. Yeah, thank you. All right, mentoring projects. So many, <laughs> so many mentoring projects. Yeah, this isn't about maybe one in particular, but I think if in the future, if we're going to be participating in four projects at the same time, we probably need to to like set things up a little differently just in terms of like how we I just I think we need to talk through it because I, I don't think we were ready for being involved in four projects yeah. at the same time. Yeah, I think a lot's changed. Uh, I, I followed Georg's pattern, which was outstanding for those for GSOC summer season of docs and outreach I don't know and and it all worked just fine except that we had way more people the so the problem wasn't the way we did it the problem was that way more people wanted to do it right yeah I think as these as these programs have worked really hard to scale themselves like it's kind of uh filtered down to each individual project who is now handling a, a lot a lot more of an influx of questions and applicants, um, which is is great. But if, you know, like, I don't think we had the infrastructure really put in place to handle because we didn't know. So, yeah. Um, Matt, do you want to maybe start a doc or a, uh, an issue in the community repo of just like to a place to kind of drop our thoughts like for next time, kind of like how we did with Chaos Con, where we just kind of had an issue as we as a we had would, a doc would be a good idea. Probably okay. not an issue at this point, but a doc okay. would probably be a really good idea. And I can go ahead and start that. Okay, just so we don't forget, you know what we're what we're thinking about, which is top of mind right now for us. So, all right, I'll just put give you an action item. Oops. Right. What else do we have? We have 10 minutes left. Is there anything Chaos Con committee needs to talk about? I feel like that's an, like everything's good right now. Um, I still haven't received the official room request from the LF, but again, I, I think it's pretty well sorted out. I looked back in some of my emails. Yeah, they just think, issued the okay. approvals. They just issued the approvals today, this afternoon, my time. So like for the accepted sessions. So they're probably just sorting out space. Is that for North America or Europe? North America. North America, because I haven't submitted to Europe yet. That's how I know. <laughs> I was talking about rooms in space yeah. for Chaos Con. Yeah, I was just figuring they were waiting for this first. For anyone who didn't hear, the Chaos Con CFP is open. So if you would like to submit a proposal to talk, Chaos Con's going to be about a half day. 
conference, three and a half hours. Um, date TBD, we're thinking probably September 12th, which is the first day of the uh, co-located events for that comp for the K uh, for the Open Source Summit EU conference, which is what we're co-locating co with in Dublin, Ireland. And if you want to submit a proposal, here's where you do it. You have until May 30th. And here's some topics we're looking at and a variety of different ways you can present your information. So, yeah. All right. I guess I had one other thing. It was just from the meeting um, with, with um, Joanne Lee just about it was just about code of conduct and there was a suggestion that came out uh that we had just have a single code of conduct so remember this was the discussion it reminded me when you were showing that the code of conduct for an event and whether or not we use the linux foundation's code of conduct uh, or our code of conduct one of the recommendations that did come from that conversation is first we just have a single code of conduct not a project code of conduct and an event code of conduct so I think there's an effort, we should probably have an effort to bring those two together. And then the second was that, um, that it, it seemed like it was okay to have the LF code of conduct as, as one code of conduct, but still have our, our chaos code of conduct as well for the event. So it's something we could still talk through a little bit, but. Elizabeth, did I get that right? Yes, you did. Okay. And here is, let's see. Can you let us know if we are documenting further progress during the application review period for GSOC? Can we continue to add documentation to our micro task repositories or should we open a new repository for after the deadline? So in terms of timing, we did have in the office hours today, like the deadline for GSOC is today. And so we will stick with that deadline and kind of take your submission um, as it is for today. And so there, there really can't be additions to that beyond today, because at this point, we're going to be pulling those and then sharing them with mentors and then beginning our decision making process. So I recommend that you make your <laughs> final changes before the deadline. All right. And yeah, and also, I mean, if the question was also, can you continue to participate in chaos during this time? Most certainly just not in terms of, of the specific proposal for GSOC. Yeah, I've had that question come to me a few times is if, if someone does, for whatever reason, does not get selected to participate in their mentorship program of choice, are they still welcome to participate in chaos and contribute? And the answer is 100% emphatically yes, of course. We would love to have you stick around and contribute in whichever way makes sense for you, whether it be working on metrics, helping with the software, coming to meetings. Um, yeah, really, we would love to still have you around. So do not hesitate to still be part of the community. We would absolutely love that, for sure. Just to clarify, we love you all. You will be a chaotic forever. No, I'm just kidding. That sounds a little creepy, but. A little bit, but it's okay. You can never leave. <laughs> Once you're here, you're here forever. Um, yeah, anyway. It's been a day. So how, uh, does anybody else have anything else? We have four more minutes in which you may speak. I'm all good. Just a question for Elizabeth. What happened to our photo mural thing that we were doing a long time back? Yeah, that's a great question, Vinod. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> it's it's on my list of things to do. Um, yeah, I'm hoping to have something that I was going to show for the website when the website gets redesigned. I want to maybe incorporate it somehow, but um, I'm not sure like what that will 
actually look like at the end, what's needed and, and like how that will fit in. So um, I have compiled everything. I just haven't taken it to that next step, but yeah, keep reminding me because I will, it'll keep my, it'll, it'll keep floating to the top of the to-do list that way, which is a good thing. So. If y'all haven't noticed on our GitHub chaos org level, we are now featuring a photo from Elizabeth. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's actually a beautiful photo. Ah, thanks. You want to see it? Here, I'll share. Oh, we, we'll probably run out of time. That's all right. I'm I'm not above self promotion. I'm really not. <laughs> there it is. Spider webs with raindrops, or, or sorry, drops of dew in them. So yeah, I got a couple of big art shows coming up. So um, yeah. And if, if it would ever warm up, I could go back outside and take a dang picture, but yeah. Next week. Next week. Yeah, it's supposed yeah, to be 80 yeah. degrees here this weekend. Next week it'll be, yeah. It was snowing yesterday here. Like what the, what? It's not supposed to do that. Yeah. I don't like it. You don't like the weather in the Midwest, wait five minutes. That's exactly right. It'll be 80 on Friday. So yeah. yeah, there's our spring. This week is our spring. <laughs> Apparently <laughs> we get five days of it. So yeah, anyway. All right. I hope everybody has a great day. I really do. And we're glad you're here. So we'll see you next week. Same time, same place. Of course, hit us up on Slack if you want to chat in the meantime, but take care, everybody. See you later. Care, everyone. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.